Guys, welcome back to the Welsh Beast YouTube channel. Wrexham have taken another step forward towards the National League title. They've taken another step forward to automatic promotion. They've beaten Bromley 2-1 away. And Notts County uh, only managed a draw against Barnet. Wrexham are now uh, three points clear. With a game in hand, they can finish no lower than second. They're guaranteed top two. I mean, they've got the goal difference back. It's Wrexham's to lose. Wrexham have one hand on the title. They've, they have one leg in League Two. As I said, they beat Bromley 2-1. Two goals from Mullin in the second half. A very convincing performance overall. Very professional. Very convincing. Job done. Neat and tidy. The only downside was Linton getting injured again down in Bromley. But I went down there. I went to the game. And to be honest with you, I can't remember much football. Because the journey there was a nightmare. The journey back was even worse. All I can remember really is seeing congestion, traffic, motorways, seats. I was locked in a coach with nowhere to run for basically 14 hours. Seven hours there, seven hours back. It was a nightmare. As you know, the game was delayed by 15 minutes. They delayed the game by 15 minutes to allow the Wrexham fans to arrive. I mean, the traffic going there was horrendous. The weather was awful as well. It just felt like a bad day. There was accidents left, right and center, but just a nightmare getting there. Slow and painful and grueling. It really was hard work. The coach driver was hard work. I'm not sure what was going on with him. But it got off to a bad start right from the beginning because we didn't leave the race course until 10 past 8. We were due to leave at 8 o'clock. And I'm never happy with the way the coaches are organised. They turn up far too late. They should allow uh, the people... Much more time to get on. The coaches should be there earlier. They should be there when people arrive so they can get straight on, get their seat, get comfortable. But we didn't get away until late. We had to change our driver after about 20 minutes. This driver was a character to say the least. He didn't seem to know where he was, where he was going, what he was brought in for, where he was going. He didn't know what the purpose of the journey was. He was just there. Behind the wheel, raring to go. But you know, we got there in the end after much panic. People, you know, people were concerned on the coach. We were all concerned whether we were going to make it. The driver said he had to stop for a second break. We had one break. Thank you very much. I had my Burger King, lovely, but we thought we might have to have a second break. Because the driver had been on the on the road too long, because the congestion, he was, his hours had elapsed. We were going anywhere, slow traffic, but the time was moving forward, and the driver, this geezer, needed a break legally. But fair play to him. In the end, he just persevered. He managed. To crack on without a break. You know, we got there, we would have got there, or we got there five past three. We would have missed the kickoff by 15 minutes anyway. Throw a break in, you're basically missing the first half. Well, they delayed the kickoff. We got there just in time to see the start. I got there just in time to see someone munch his way through uh, a meat and potato pie as he was stood in front of me. You get there late. You're limited to where you stand. You just get where you can. Some geezer in front of me 
had a lovely pie that he, he demolished with skill and precision. Absolutely fantastic to see. But I was only at the ground for two hours. You know, I left Wrexham eight o'clock in the morning, roughly. I got back to Wrexham midnight. What's that, 16 hours? 16 hours at the ground for two. I mean, the journey back was a nightmare. He decided to pick his own route. He decided to go a different way back through Essex. Why? I don't know. There must have been a reason for it. When I saw the sign, welcome to Essex, I thought, what the fuck are we doing in Essex? We shouldn't have been in Essex. But he decided to go that way. But we were met in the end with more congestion, more traffic. There'd been another accident. He didn't make the right choices. I mean, he wasn't in coordination with the other drivers, I don't think. I don't think he had a sat-nav. He was relying on us, the passengers, to provide information. That's what it seemed like. It was a calamity. It was a disaster. It was a comedy of errors. I mean, at one point, we were in a lane that just didn't move. For 15 minutes, we didn't move. And this time, he was determined to have a break. He wasn't going to crack on without a break. You know, we, need, we all needed a break, to be fair. I had to get off. I, I was going crazy. I was cooped up on that coach. We were all held hostage on that coach. We needed fresh air. We needed to move around. The services didn't have much to offer. <laughs> I mean, the Scotch eggs were £2.40. Now, I love a Scotch egg. I used to be addicted to Scotch eggs, but I wasn't paying £2.40. But we had, a, we had some time off the coach. But, oh, it was a grueling, grueling journey. There and back, it was horrendous. It was slow, it was grim, it was bleak. We all just wanted to get home in the end. I don't know why he went that route. Did he think it was a magical journey? Did he think he could get us home in record time? He must have known what he was doing. There must have been a reason to it. Surely he knew what he was doing, surely. But he chose to go that way. It didn't work out. I'm sure some of it was out of his hands. He could have navigated it better. He could have managed the journey better. But <laughs> what an experience. What, what an experience. One to remember. One to tell stories about. And the thing is, Wrexham won. Wrexham got the win. It was a good day for Wrexham. Not County dropping points. It was the perfect results it could not have gone any better in terms of the football results Rexon's performance as i said was very professional a ground they haven't done well at for a while a pitch they don't like playing on you know artificial surface but i felt their performance was so professional so calm exactly what they needed to do they got off to a flyer they were well on top from the beginning. They had three good chances to score. Three headers. They should have put one away. They should have buried one with ease and opened up the floodgates. Who was it? It was Palmer who had a shot saved. Or was it off the line? He had the first one. Toza, I believe, hit the bar. Mendy hit the bar. So a variety of people getting involved. But they, one of them should have scored and set them on their way early on. But it was nice to see Wrexham start like that. But they've got to take chances when they're on top. They were in control for most of the half. But towards the end, Bromley did start to get on top. They did create chances of their own. Toza got in with a good block. They were forcing some corners and some free kicks. They were ruffling up the defence. But... There were some, was some desperate defending from Wrexham, but they were alert to it. They were on the ball. They were game to fight. There was fighting spirit there. And they did finish the half second best. Nil-nil at half time. You're feeling, hang on, is the day set up for a bit of disaster? Are Wrexham 
looking second best because Bromley were on top. Remember, Bromley finished a half on strong. It's nil-nil. Not a disaster, but is it going that way? Have the day's event, events set it up? Are the gods against Wrexham? The delayed kickoff? The crap travel? Linton went off at half time, and I'm thinking at the start of the second half, it's all starting to turn. The demons are coming up. The demons are around, looking to cause trouble. But Wrexham, to their credit, really started the second half well. Mullin had a great chance. Should have done better. He normally does. But he got his goals in the end. Two early goals in the second half. A header from inside the six-yard box. He puts them away. There is meat and drink. He loves them. He does not turn them down very often. The second goal, a mistake from the goalkeeper, who was a replacement. We had a bit of luck there. Bromley's first choice keeper was suspended. The replacement made a mistake. You know, it's hard for keepers. I mean, keepers get a lot of stick. But, to uh, but it was from a Toza throw in, I believe. The missile launched in. He fumbled it. He dropped it. Mullin reacted as he does. Alert to uh, the opportunity for him. And he tucked it away. Wrexham 2-0 up. It was all going brilliantly. It was all looking so good. But Bromley, they had the cheek to respond. They responded quickly through cheek. He put the ball away at the back post. From across, the prap should have been prevented. I think it was Barnett or O'Connell didn't clear the lines, didn't clear the ball when they should have done better. They were out-muscled. They were muscled off the ball. And the cross was put in for cheek. But Wrexham saw out the game well. I think they managed the game after that. They weren't really under any danger. It was just a professional performance away from home. Against a decent team, mid-table mid team, who caused Wrexham problems on a regular basis. Oh, brilliant. I think I, were, I was impressed by the performance. I'm impressed with this setup. I mean, this back five has never looked so impressive. You have uh, the wing backs going forward. It's, it's working. Mendy coming in now, starting regular. Barnett, the new signing, looking impressive, getting forward, so aggressive, so ambitious. And the cover's there. I mean, Tony Cliff has really grown into a star player. The lad is made of steel. He takes his knocks. He gets battered around. He takes his bruises. He's made of steel. He keeps going. He's a rock at the moment. Uh, O'Connell has come in and... And got going from the start. He hasn't needed time to get going. He started on fire. So composed on the ball. He picks the right choices all the time. He's not never seems to be under pressure. Or in any real danger for most of the time. He's a very, very reassuring and safe guy on the ball. He's, they rock solid there. Toza, as we know, you know, is one of the... Uh, the long-standing players in this Wrexham squad now. He's one of the players of this revitalised squad, this new team that's fighting for the title, this impressive team. He's still chipping away. He's still contributing so well. But it's nice to see these new players, these new signings find their feet, particularly O'Connell, who's new. And just Tony Cliff growing by the week, growing by the game into a star man. A star man. Cannon. I think everyone's impressed with Cannon. Again, at Bromley, he controlled the show. He's like a terrier. He's a Jack Russell. He's everywhere. He's got a great work rate, a great engine. He closes down really quickly. He gets stuck in really quickly. He wants the ball. He makes the right decisions. He covers every blade of grass. Luke Young is fantastic, but is Cannon just a step up from Luke Young? Is he a better version of Luke Young? Luke Young has a great engine. Luke Young gets about. 
but is Canon just that little bit better, that little bit of an improvement? Maybe so. All these signings now are top of the range. They've got so much experience and so much pedigree from elsewhere, from higher level clubs. No duff signings. Every signing has been identified and worked worked on. They've got, they're getting their men, you think. You think they're not getting the booby prize, their second choice. You think they're getting their first choice. Wrexham is an attractive club for now for a variety of reasons. They're looking fantastic. They've got Hollywood owners, lots of interest, lots of global attention. People want to come, but there's more than that. They're delivering on the pitch. They have a manager who is respected and trusted and has proven to deliver. And he delivered again yesterday. Brilliant setup, brilliant approach. The whole team worked. I call it the machine. When it works, it's a joy to watch. It all does. Everybody does or it's supposed to. The team operates as one. And I felt that was the same yesterday. Linton back in the team. He's gone off again down there. It looks like I think he's pulled the tendon. They tried to get him going during half time. They tried to work on it. It wasn't to be. Howard's has come on. I mean, Howard is another one with great experience, a great relationship with, with Parkinson from the days at Stoke, I believe, or was it Bolton? Bolton, perhaps. But, uh, I mean, he has an unfair stick because of Maidenhead, but I believe that uh, Mark Howard has been one of Wrexham's players of the season. He's contributed to this great run. He's contributed to the title challenge. I mean, a few mistakes don't make him because he's been so solid most of the time. I really like the way he commands the area. I reckon he's been a star player overall, Howard. And I think... I, mean, I didn't think Leighton was going to get back in. He did. He's a fan favourite. He's a joy to see in the team. And he's been injured again. He's having no luck. Well, he is. And it's all bad. And you've got to feel for him. He's jinxed down there. He's jinxed down there. But I think Howard is someone we can trust. But Wrexham put in a great performance to come away with a, a solid away win. All three points when not County drop points. So important to get that win now that uh, Notts County dropped the points. As I said, three points clear, a game in hand. Wrexham now have the goal difference in their favour. Only by one, but it's in their favour. You, It's theirs to lose. It's Wrexham's title to lose. Notts County have only won two of the last three. They're not as strong as they used to be now. Is it slipping away? Is it getting too much for them? And they're just... They're, they're, they're doing well, but it's not enough. And they're just dropping the points. And they're just not quite staying with Wrexham now. And Notts County starting just to slip away. Right at the end, they've done so well for so long. They've been so impressive. Their strike force is fantastic. They don't just rely on Langstaff. They've got a variety of top players, they're a top team with a fantastic stadium another historical club but is it slipping away are Wrexham just too strong now to have too much of an advantage at this late stage Wrexham are not going to drop that many points you know what I mean you can't see them, the form tells us it's Wrexham's they're not going to, they're going to lose one more I think at most They'd have to collapse dramatically to lose this now, Wrexham. It's Wrexham's to lose, barring a dramatic collapse. You know, I said Wrexham, I said I would eat my shoes if Wrexham didn't win the league. I think my shoes are safe. I think my digestive system is safe. Wrexham are going to do it. It's theirs to lose. Notts County starting to slip away. It's Wrexham's to lose. We've got it. I can see it. It's coming. Destiny is calling. Wrexham will do it. Cheers, guys. And I will see you on the next video.